Good morning. It's Friday the 5th of March and this morning we were reading Job chapter 34 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I thought this morning we'd maybe have a wee look at Job 34. Um, I think uh, by this time in Job it can become quite heavy. We've kind of waded through these regular arguments and Job kind of pleading his innocence and his friends telling him that he's terrible. Uh, and an awful person for pleading in his innocence because implied within Job's uh, claim of innocence is that God is not being fair, not being just. And I wanted just to look at Elihu, this uh, young upstart who comes along after the first three friends and says, I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm going to lay this out. And so he, he comes in and he came in the day before yesterday. We started looking at him. Uh, but I want us to look just at 10 to, to 13, verses 10 to 13 of chapter 34. And just maybe to see where Elihu makes a wee bit of a mistake in the way that he seeks to counsel Job. And maybe for us ourselves uh, to be wary in the way that we counsel others and even think about circumstances in our own life as well. So let's let's read first of all from verse 10. It says, So listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do evil, from the Almighty to do wrong. He repays everyone for what they have done. He brings on them what their conduct deserves. It is unthinkable that God would do wrong, that the Almighty would pervert justice. Who appointed him over the earth? Who put him in charge of the whole world? What Elihu is saying is that God is the sovereign creator of all things. He is in charge. No one put him in charge. And it is unthinkable that he would do wrong. It is beyond comprehension to think that the only just God would be unjust. And he says to Job, how can you even say that you're experiencing injustice in your life? God would never do that. He couldn't do that. And you see the two things that he's saying. See them as separate things. The first God is just. And then his uh, logical conclusion from that, therefore Job shouldn't experience injustice unless Job's done something wrong. He's saying that everything in Job's life will either be he will receive good because he's doing good or he will receive injustice or he will receive punishment because he has done something wrong. And I think that's where Elihu goes wrong because he thinks that God's justice has to be completed in this uh, t um, physical creation, in, in this life, in, this, uh, in the time that we have on earth. He thinks that Job's uh, sores must be a direct result of some sin that Job's committed. But that's not the way that God looks at things and that's not the way that he brings about his justice. God will execute justice perfectly. But he will do it in eternity. God is not limited to, to here, time, space and, and day to day. God will bring justice, but he will bring it in eternity. And we are extremely grateful for that because we know that we are sinners. And we know that we deserve God's uh, just punishment and wrath. But because of the way that God executes his judgment, brings justice, it means that Jesus' death on the cross 2,000 years ago paid for my sin today in 2021. God's justice isn't time-bound. It's eternal. And so as Elihu speaks to Job about his particular situation, he is right when he says that God is just. He is right that God, he says no one is able to judge God because he is perfect. He's wrong to think that what's going on in Job's life must have a, a reason in that close temp, um, time period. God will bring justice. And we'll see how God speaks to Job uh, in the next couple of days. But for now, let's pray and give thanks for our just God. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your justice. And it is beyond our comprehension how you work 
your righteousness and your justice through this broken world. Uh, we know that we are guilty of sin and we know that some who are extremely guilty of many, many sins yet have comfortable lives and we know that some who have lived uh, good lives by human standards, righteous lives and sought to follow you uh, are persecuted and live in poverty. Father, we thank you for this lesson uh, that we gain from looking at Elihu's mistake and we ask that you would help us to trust your eternal justice and not look for it uh, immediately. So we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I hope you have a good day. And I hope that made sense. Uh, God bless.